welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to Super Agents Live. Today's guest, and and by the way, if you're new to the show, welcome. We talk all about real estate, but, but really we talk about entrepreneurship. This show is a show about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. So, you know, even if you don't sell real estate, there's tons of value you can get out of out of our uh, uh, all of our episodes. Okay, here's today's guest. She did last uh, last year. She did 290 transactions. That's a big number. This year, she's on track for 330. No matter where this person is at, she wants to grow. It's a, it's. A, I find it fascinating that people, even when they're super successful, they just keep the pedal to the metal. And they keep going, even though, you know, there's, there's something about that, that, uh, you know, it's not money that drives these people. It's, there's a, there's a different thing. It's really, I think about, about people wanting to reach their own personal potential. Uh, and I find that, I find that admirable. So she did, she's on track for 330 transactions. What we talk about is why she still has a coach. Again, you're not, you're not new to the business, um, you're doing 300 transactions. Why do you need a coach? <clears throat> but this, so we talked about that a little bit and why, and why coaching is so important. Um, we also talk about how she uncovered her why and, and really use that why to, to create a clear vision for the business that she wanted to create. And then she went out and did it. She also, one kind of interesting thing that, that uh, or at least I found interesting, she talks about how she tracks her calls. I'm going to tell you how she does it in a second <clears throat> before even you hear it from her. She is extremely effective. She has to make 12 calls to make an appointment. Now, people out there in the audience say, you know, some people make 67, some people make 85, you know, uh, she is just super effective because she has a big database. She makes 12, 12 calls, she gets an appointment. Here's how she tracks it. She puts 11 pennies on her desk and then a $100 bill. She makes a call, moves a penny, makes a call, moves a penny. She knows by the time she gets to that 12th call, that's that 100, that's a money call. It's a $100 bill. So stay tuned. Before we get to the content, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm. But how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard. Or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of discover publications clients and i talked to this one guy and he does some interesting things he'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm in his sphere he creates a write-up he interestingly enough resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent and by the way this guy has 60 percent market penetration he told me the paper has cemented those numbers if you're interested go check out discoverpubs.com let me know what you think before we get to the content, before we get to the show, uh, just really quick, just in case you're new, there's a couple things I want to cover. <clears throat> One, if you don't know, the hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. This is a big follow train. Tweet something out, something you hear from the show, use that hashtag, and you will get more followers. And, and, and really, you know what you'll do? You'll become part of our tribe. And we have a very active Twitter tribe here on uh, or at Super Agents Live. Second thing, I have had an ebook that I wrote a while back, maybe, maybe, uh, geez, seven, eight, nine months ago, I wrote this book, uh, 11 Strategies to Get You on the Fast Track, something like that. It's only eight pages. I've had it on the book, and it's been downloaded now maybe about 4,000 times. 
I decided I felt like uh, I should update that. I, uh, the, the plan was always to update that. So I wrote a new book, 32 pages called How to Sell. This episode was, is going live on June 30, 2014, uh, and we should have the new episode up and available for release um, for free, of course. So uh, if you want to read that, go get it. Uh, if you don't know, <clears throat> we are going to have a live event here in San Diego. It, only 10 people can come. Very small, uh, very intimate mastermind. It's 150 bucks, dirt cheap, just enough, you know, just enough to, to rent out a hotel suite and get some food. But uh, everybody is going to uh, get on the hot seat, talk about their business, talk about where they're winning, talk about where they're struggling. And we are all, I mean, I'll take the first crack at trying to break you loose uh, and get you moving faster. So, and then the audience, everybody, it's a big, everybody's going to participate. Uh, the last thing, coaching. This episode, we talk a lot about coaching. This girl does 300 transactions, still has a coach. I take four clients on. That's it. And I have, I, have, I have a spot available. Now, I've had a spot available for three weeks, which is amazing to me because when I've had spots come up before, they're gone like in, in 24, 48 hours. But I do have one. So if you're interested in leveling up, send me an email. Let me know. We'll have a chat and see if we're a good fit. Let's get to the show. Today on the show, I'm super excited to have this person. This person last year closed 291 transactions. This year... She's on track to do 330. I can't, those numbers are astounding. I'm thrilled to welcome Lucy Ham. Hey, Lucy, thanks for taking the time out today. You are so welcome. My pleasure. So listen, Lucy, uh, you know, I, I know a little bit about you. I know that even doing 300 transactions, you still have a coach. You work with Mike Ferry, but let's back up. Take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've been in the industry for 40 years, but, you know, take a minute. Tell us about yourself and your business. Well, great. Um, it has been a really fun ride. You know, I started at in my 20s and with little, with children. And um, so, you know, I, I was actually in real estate when I met my husband. So my family has grown up with me as being a realtor, which I say that because, you know, so I'm still married af after 30 some years and uh, my children still love me because <laughs> that is really a difficult thing for family sometimes because the schedule is not at all normal. So that's been good, and um, you know, probably 15 20, 15, 20 years ago, I started building a team because I would just figure out, I was just overwhelmed, I can't do this by myself, so I hired a half-time person, and then a full-time person, and then a one and a half, you know, just kind of added a half-time person as I would build because I really, I, nobody had teams back then, so it was kind of the trial and error, and nobody else did it, but I needed help. So I was a little bit odd man out. Uh, but now, you know, my team is just really a huge strength for me. I, every day I have to learn to delegate because I want to just do it all myself. But, um, you know, it's it's working well. We have great systems, and we all support each other. We're all licensed here. Some of us are in the office. Some of us are out of the office. So it's uh, it's been great. And probably 15 years ago, um, 12 years ago, I'm sorry. So 12 years ago I started being coached by Mike Ferry, but I had been listening to his speaking at different places a long time, but I was done in real estate. I was just like ready to just throw it all in the tank. But I would go to his his seminars and it would there would be people sitting next to me selling more than me, working four or five days a week, and I'm like, I want that. So so that's why I got in coaching because I wanted to go from six six and a half days a week down to four, four and a half and you know, after one year and being in coaching, and this isn't a sales pitch for that, but after one year being in coaching, I was working four and a half days a week. I'd sold 20 more homes and made $80,000 more by working less. Wow. And so, you know, really, it's changed my life because I have a life now. Right. I mean, I work Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and I like that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, how does... <laughs> I, how does that work? I mean, so you, you obviously you have, there's some, I want to dig into your skill set because you know, you, no matter what you have the skills and not everybody has those skills. So, you know, I want to find out if that was native to you or, you know, or how you built those, but what is the difference? How did you go from working, you know, six and a half days a week, like, like most agents do down to four and a half, but produce another 20 deals for the year? Well, you know, my schedule, it sounds like such a simple thing, but everything I'm going to do today is on my schedule. It tells me when I'm going to walk out the door of my house, 
when I'm going to be home, when I'm going to have lunch, when I'm going to call my sellers, when I'm going to go to a listing, tells me everything I'm going to do every minute of the day until I just sign off at night, you know, which is maybe five, six, seven o'clock when I'm done doing things I have to do. So really it's my schedule and having a paper schedule in front of me, I look down and tells me where I need to go. You know, it would be a little bit like you go to the doctor's office you know, all those people at the front desk, they tell you, the doctor, go see her, go see him, go do this. You right. know, and he doesn't get off the treadmill till he's done seeing all those people. Right, right, right. And look, you, th that's so important, I think. And, uh, you know, that's something I c can be better at for sure. But, you know, if you can schedule every, you know, every, you know, if every, your whole day in 15 minute increments, for example, it, it there, there's something magical when you don't have to think about what's next, right? You, for you, you just look down and you know what's next. Yeah, because if you have a choice, you'll go to the bathroom, you'll get another cup of coffee, you'll go talk to somebody, you, you know, you will procrastinate and not do what you're supposed to do. I mean, that's, that's what happens to me. I just, I just do everything that I'm not supposed to do if it's not written down to do it. So, you know, and also, you know, it's really helped me. I mean, my kids are grown now, but when they were little, I never missed anything. I didn't miss ballet. I didn't miss soccer. I didn't miss anything because it was all on my schedule and I'd show up and, enjoy it for that many hours and you know it was it was awesome how that right. works right right you know and there's something there's i have to remind myself there's something called parkinson's law have you ever heard of that parkinson's law um no. concept well and it, here's what it is it's and i don't know if i can say it exactly right but it, what it is is whatever task right so let's say that you give yourself a task and you allot yourself two hours to it that task will take you two hours if you allot yourself 30 minutes for that same task you will get that task done in that whatever time you have allotted. So, it, so again, like for your schedule, if you, you know, that ballet or whatever, right? Um, if you can schedule, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I can just see yeah. how that worked for you. I, you know, I agree with that. I didn't know it was called that, but that's exactly, that is exactly what I do because, um, if you don't do that, you know, um, something can take an hour where really it's like a 10 minute thing. Right. Right, right, right. Because you mess around in between. Yeah, so, I agree. So is that, Lucy, is, is that one of the key, I mean, is that one of the key things that, that helped you, again, you know, working with Mike? And by the way, do you work with Mike or do you work with one of his people? Um, right now, I have one of his coaches. Um, I was working with Mike and I needed some specialty help and something else. So sometimes I have Mike, sometimes I have somebody else. But right now I have someone, another coach, Gailey. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. So, so, uh, in terms of when you, you know, why for you, I don't know. I, I mean, I did not intend to talk about this coaching thing, but, um, but you know, w w look, you're going to do 330 transactions. Number mm -hmm. one, you know, you've been at this for 40 years. You don't need to work anymore, Lucy. I'm sure you're a very wealthy woman. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, and you have grown kids. Why do you even keep doing it? That always is, is interesting to me. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I, I like, I like my lifestyle. I like what I have. I like my lifestyle now. I like what I do. I mean, you know, I, at one point in time, you know, I, um, I had a coach says, you know, you know, what, what would you like to do? What causes you to be able to go to work every day? And I said, you know what, if I can leave town, I know when I'm leaving town, I can work, I can work like a dog while I'm here. So I take one vacation a month. I mean, I schedule it. Sometimes it's two days. Sometimes it's a week, you know, some whatever. But I take one vacation a month. And, you know, that for me, if I can, if I know it's the light at the end of the tunnel for me. I mean, when I leave, I am gone. I am right. not here at all. So, you know, that's very helpful. I mean, I like what I do. I mean, I was raised on a farm. You know, we got up at 5 in the morning. We milked the cows, oh, wow. had a snack, went to school, had another snack, milked the cows again, went to bed. I mean, you know, my dad and mom, you know, being farmers, I – never thought of them as being self-employed, but they were. And so, you know, maybe a little bit of it that maybe that helps. Right. Maybe that helps, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, so, uh, and by the way, what market are you in? I'm calling 810 area code. What, where are you? Uh, Michigan, Flushing, Michigan. Michigan. Next to Flint, Michigan, a suburb of Flint, Michigan. Got it. Okay. So, so um, in your, and uh, Flint, I've heard of it. I don't know how big it is. How big is that city? Um, you know, it's about 100,000 people. And the suburbs are probably another hundred thousand, so a couple hundred total. Which is not very market. big, right? I'm in San nope. Diego, right? So we have millions of people here. Oh, um, yeah. So you have to be. I mean, everybody knows Lucy Ham. You, I mean, if you're doing three hundred, you are the King Kong realtor out there. Yeah, really. I am a market leader here. Um, nobody 
knows this market better than I do. I mean, I know every house. I know every street. Right. Um, I've helped families in multi-generational ways. And, um, you know, the house, uh, one family, I've sold up to seven properties for them, you know, as they move and change and get their family bigger and smaller. And, yeah, so, you know, it's it's good. We have 6,500 people in our database as past clients, and we work them, and probably 40, 50% of our business comes from past clients and sphere of influence. Amazing. And, and, I mean, mm-hmm. and then where, where does the other 50% come from? Oh, expireds for sale by owners. Got they it. walk in the front door. Somebody's friend said to call them, you know, so, um, just and so, all those places. Mm-hmm. Right. So so 6,500 people you've done, You've that's a lot of deals you've done. In terms of you starting, Lucy, you know, you, you started real estate and you went from the farm and then you, in your 20s, you started selling real estate. Uh-huh. What what drew you to, I mean, what, why? You know, I was, um, I, I lived in, uh, as a, as a, an 18 year old, you know, I lived in Hawaii and then Wisconsin, et cetera, and worked under some great people, controllers of corporations. So, you know, by 25, I was a controller of a corporation in, uh, I was assistant controller of a corporation in Hawaii, and then I moved to Wisconsin and did the same thing. So, you know, I had a lot of organizational skills because of that and a lot of business thinking. And, um, you know, I became pregnant with my first child, and I thought, you know what, my life is over. I won't be able to do the nine to five. So, you know, real estate was one of the things I thought I could have flexible time. You know, sometimes it could really be 24 seven, which isn't very flexible, but. Um, and so that's when I started, but actually what I did is in Wisconsin, I really didn't know hardly anybody. So I would just do one open house a week. Um, and whoever walked in that door at the open house, they were mine. They were a buyer, they were a seller, they were mine. And, uh, that's really how I started my business. That's how I started getting business. Cause I had a, a little one. I couldn't, um, I couldn't work all day long, you know, and uh, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money. I was kind of poor actually. So <clears throat> that was a start, and um, you know it kind of grew from there. And then I moved to Michigan after four years and started all over, not knowing anyone, and started the same way. So with an open house, you just you just you know you you didn't know anybody, you had no database, you had no connections in the nothing. market, and you just went uh, had an open house, and and when people walked through, like you you just you knew that you could just build a relationship; they were yours. Yep, every Saturday, two hours, and uh, I didn't believe in working on Sundays, you know, so I didn't do Sundays, but, and back then, people actually came to open houses, I mean, now, right. zero to two people come, and they'll be the neighbors, so now that, that really wouldn't work for now, but back then, people came to open houses, so I just claimed them, so, did a great job. So, in, so you, today, you know, for somebody out there, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I, I know for a fact that there's somebody out there that is in your position, right? They're in a new market, you know, they're just starting out in real estate, and they don't know anybody, right? And a lot of people feel like they don't, everybody knows more people than they think they know, but everybody feels like, man, I only know like 10 people. Um, yeah. W- would, you, would you suggest trying, you know, doing the same thing, trying to follow your path of, you know, doing open houses? You know, um, if I started over today or if somebody was starting over today, I, w- I would not, I mean, I would not not do that, but that probably wouldn't be the best thing to do. Okay. I would, um, you know, I would probably choose 20 people to call every day, even if it's um, 20 people in a certain neighborhood or if it's uh, actually, I'd probably, uh, and I did this a couple years ago, just called all the estate and probate attorneys in the yellow pages and, um, you know what, every single one of them except two actually came to the phone or called me back. And um, so now I have a great relationship with these attorneys and they send me business. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe pick all the attorneys to call, maybe pick all the accountants to call, maybe all the financial advisors to call. Call them, you know, call them once a month. How can I help you build your business as a financial advisor? You know, who do you know that might need my help today? Um, just make the calls, like at least 20 calls a day you will get business. Interesting. I mean, Interesting. It's a numbers game. Yeah, it, well, yeah, sure. I mean, and it's, it's sales in general is a numbers game. Now, so let's talk about that probate thing because I actually have a coaching client that I, that I help out with and, and that's one of the things that he wants to do. So we went out and we called all the, uh, you know, we, in our, his area, we have all their numbers, that we have all their names, you know, and uh, we were in a, you know, we sent them a mailer and then he's starting to make calls. Now, what he has found is, uh, amazingly enough, almost none of these probate attorneys or, you know, have an agent that they're working with. Um, how did it go for you? How did it work for you? Was that a successful thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know what? Most of them said, you know, I really appreciate the call. 
Um, I, it sounds like you're really a go-getter. Um, and um, I, I think that, you know, as soon as I have someone, I will give you a call. And they do. You know, I, I get calls that, set, that they say they were in court, and they have a court order that these people have to list their house with me. And you know, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to list your house with me. So, um, so really, it's, it's been great. And um, uh, several of them said, you know, um, I, I use a realtor, but I don't really think they do anything, is right. what they would say. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, I don't really know who that realtor is, but, you know, we'll go to work for you. So, I mean, you know, you really have to um, – how can I build your business? You know, that's really my, where I was coming from. How can I help you? If I give them something of value, you know, they will eventually think of me when it's time. So, and how did you, and look, and you, and by the way, you have to mean that, right? I mean, everybody says that, you know, Hey, how can I help you? But they really have a, you know, they're, they have an agenda, right? And their agenda is like, yeah. you give me, how did you, uh, in terms of these probate attorneys, how would you, how would somebody out there add value to, to them or to their business? You know what, um, so if you were, um, if I was talking to you and basically I told him this in the first call, you know, as a, an attorney, you know that there are some things that I can do for you and your clients that don't cost money. So if you ever have a divorce client, um, I could do a free market analysis for you. If you have a bankruptcy, I could do a free market analysis for you because I'm sure you need those for your file, for your portfolio. Right. So whenever you do, give me a call. And they do. You know, I I can do those free things and um, got you know, it. Yeah, yeah, no, it I helps guess, them, helps me, helps everybody. Right, right. I can totally see how how that makes. And look for for everybody out there who who doesn't know what a probate attorney is, and they find this fascinating, and they're going to try it out. Can just can you just you know fifteen thirty seconds what a probate attorney does? Yeah, probate attorney. So if I am going to call a probate attorney, I'm going to call and ask him, you know, my mom and dad are elderly, we need to set up a trust or a will, or maybe I'm elderly and I need to know, I have to decide, you know, here's how I'm going to sell my business when I sell it. Here's how I'm going to, if I pass away tomorrow, here's what my kids get, here's what my church gets. So basically they help you plan your life that in case you expire, in case your life expires. (laughs) <laughs> which right. we all will expire. <laughs> you know, it's funny um, you saying that. Uh, somebody else was on the show, and uh, this this person was a really strong geographic farmer. And she told me a story of, like, she farmed this area, farmed this area, and uh, and there was one person that she kind of ran into a, a, a bunch and really never really formed a good relationship with her, but but they knew each other. <clears throat> when that person died, the, the daughter came to that agent and said, hey, um, it was in my mom's will that you were going to sell her house. Yeah. Amazing. I have I, a couple times this year already. Yeah. They would call and say, my, my dad said, when, when I pass away, you need to call her. And he wrote it down right here. And they show me when I get there. So it's kind of nice. Amazing. So we do a lot of things um, for the senior center, you know, um, just little things for the senior center. When they have something going on, we maybe provide water bottles with our name on it or they have a bus trip we provide a couple dozen water bottles and some candy bars and you know all of those things they don't cost a lot of money but they're very very valued yeah so um um so you were this mom right going back to your 20s you're a mom right and uh, you wanted to spend more time you couldn't do the nine to five thing so you said oh geez real estate um you know throughout your your career lucy you've seen a ton of people come and go Mm-hmm. What is the thing? You know, is there? You know, what is the hurdle that that you know real estate entrepreneurs have to overcome to find success? Yeah, you know, the the word is work, um, <laughs> work. You know, I think that this business sounds like oh, good, I get to go so, show some beautiful homes, and that's probably ten percent of any but any realtor's day. You know, you have to know the financing and all of that, so you have to really be, you know, really. What keeps me excited about this business is I'm always learning. I'm always going to events, uh, seminars. I mean, I'm always learning things. I, I, may, I might learn from the person next to me or the person speaking, but you know, always learning is really what keeps people and their spirit going. Right. So, you know, always learning, and it's going to be a lot of work. I mean, I make eight to nine thousand calls a year looking for buyers for our properties. So, wow. you know, eight to ten every morning, I'm on the phone making calls, looking for buyers. It doesn't matter who I call, really. I mean, I have a set pattern who I call, but it doesn't really matter who I call because somebody's going to say yes. Right. 
Interesting. So work. And for you, you know, growing up on the farm, I'm sure that work ethic, you know, waking up at five in the morning, you know, milking the cows and and feeding the the whatever, the ducks mm-hmm. um, yeah. was really ingrained in you. Um, uh, do you, do you, is that still, I mean, are, is that like in, baked into you still? Do you still get up at five in the morning and, and start working at some level? No, I get up at six. I mean, it, I don't really like to get up that much. I mean, I like to sleep in, but you know, it's, it's just my schedule, you know, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, I don't have to do that, but it's my schedule to do that. You know, two nights a week, I have appointments. As long as my customers don't go to bed, I have appointments like one at five, six, seven, eight, nine, every hour on the hour. Um, if I have appointments, I just do it two nights a week and the other nights, you know, five nights a week are my own. So um, it's just giving yourself a schedule. I mean, it's nobody else's schedule. It's just mine. Yeah. So. Right, right, right. Now, you know, real estate is a, you know, th- this is a business of no's, right? This is a business of rejection. You know, for you, you yeah. know, you, you make eight to 9,000 calls and I'm sure those are warm calls, but you know, I mean, you know, you also call people that you don't know, you know, and you're rejected all day long. How mm-hmm. do you, you know, it, it, how do you handle that rejection? I mean, how, how have you, I'm sure that doesn't phase you today, but you know, there are other people getting in into the business and they're like, man, I, you know, I, I don't want to knock on somebody's door because I'm interrupting them. I don't want to call them because, you know, I'm bothering them. Is it- mm-hmm. Well, it still does phase me a lot. If I go out on the listing and they choose somebody else, it phases me a lot. And um, making the calls, though, I, you know, I just know that there's X amount of no's you're going to get before you get to a yes. And, um, you know, with the, the scripts and the skill set, you get a yes quicker as you just work. You know, you just, I get yes quicker. So, you know, somebody starting in real estate, they might have to make 100 calls for somebody to get a yes because their skill set of what they say and being intuitive and right. matching personalities, you know, all that stuff is not that great. You know, it's a learned, it's a learned trait, but you know, I keep track of my numbers being in coaching, you know, every time I make 12 calls, I get a listing appointment. And so, you know, I just know, I mean, if I put 12 pennies in front of me, if I was discouraged, I know about on average, every 12 pennies, I'll, I'll get a yes. So, you know, and I used to do that when I was having to make 30, 40, 50 calls to get a yes for an appointment. Um, I just lay, you know, that many paper clips or that many pennies in front of me and just move one every time because it encouraged me like, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, that, so it's a game. Yeah. I make it a game. <laughs> yeah. It would be cool, you know, for you, I don't, I, I want to talk, I don't know how you get an appointment every 12 calls, but it would be for you, like if, if it was 12 or somebody else, it was 20 or 40 or whatever, it would be kind of neat to, to, you know, like have pennies lined up, penny, penny, penny. And then, uh, you know, if it's for you, the 12th call, like, like then you put a hundred dollar bill there, right? Oh make, yeah. Make a little bit excited to work <laughs> down. Like, okay, I'm going to get that. <clears throat> um, look, that's an incredibly high conversion. How do you make 12 calls and get an appointment? Well, the, um, the people I call are probably warmer calls than I would have made, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So it would be, um, it would be past clients, sphere of influence. Uh, maybe, maybe today I'm going to call all the businesses downtown Flushing here where I work. You know, I mean, everybody knows somebody that's going to move. Everybody's talking right. about real estate all the time. Right. So they know somebody that's getting married or having a baby, needs a bigger house, smaller house. You know, they just do. So, you know, these are people that know my name. So they do trust me before they answer the phone. You know, they're not expecting my call, but they do trust me. So, um, you know, by asking questions that don't say yes or no, like, um, you know, who, what, when, where, why, you know, by asking those kind of questions, you know, they just spill the beans. They just... Oh yeah, my neighbor's been talking about it. No, and actually, they got it for sale by owner sign out front, and here's the number. Mm. So, you know, um, it's a conversation, right? And it's you know, it it's a skill set of doing it over and over and over. What works, what doesn't, what got me that last appointment. So, you know, something you said earlier, Lucy, is you said, you know, every street, you know, every house, and I'm sure that you do, right? And that's one of the things that comes up on the show uh, often is you really have to know your inventory. You know, yeah. by having that super deep intel, uh, is, is that an advantage for you? Oh, yeah, it is. Because when they mention the street, I'm like, that's not a neighborhood they'd like. Right. Or maybe it's an, oh, that's a great neighborhood. They'd love it. So, yeah, I mean, you, you by knowing the street, you know what the neighborhood's like. You know, it ranges from 100 to 500 or 
200 to 300. You know, you just there's just some things you know by being by living this long. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> how funny. So so you know how does. Um, and this kind of points back. I mean, I mean, you know the whole your whole city. Not everybody can do that, right? So, for somebody out there, you know, trying to get going, trying to kickstart their career, you know, should they, you know, have a farm and and like literally like walk it and know it and like know the trash truck routes and just. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I don't really believe in farming a neighborhood, to mm. be honest, because just because I really don't. I I think you'd be better off to call the Chamber of Commerce membership, um, you know, whatever little town you live in or big town you live in, you know, maybe call all the business people there. Um, you know, when you go get gas at the gas station, ask that person because you get gas at the same place most of the same time. When you go to the dry cleaners, when you go to church, I mean, you go enough places all the time that you give money. I mean, you give money at church, you give it wherever you give money. That's like social prospecting. I mean, if you play golf, you know all those golf people. I mean, whatever you're doing, just ask people for business, you know. Ask them, who needs my help right now? And, um, you know, calling neighborhoods, I mean, it really hasn't, it takes so long. I mean, it takes so long to get the money. So that's like a backup plan hmm. because, you know, it, it, you're like, you're like, you're a stranger like everybody else uh, when you're calling those neighborhoods. So if you go to people that kind of know you or you know them, or you have something in common with, you know, you'll be, they'll remember you. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor discover publications will create a customized branded 12 page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now this paper is cheaper than you think for slightly more than the cost of a stamp. You can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Right. And I would say the other thing is always wear your name tag. That sounds so stupid, but always wear your name tag because yeah. that is, um, very critical because if people see the name, they remember it better. It's just our, it's just how our body works. If they don't see the name, it's like, who was that lady that came in here? I can't remember her right. name. Right. The one with the brown hair. Yeah. With the red right. car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's good. I, you are so counter. I mean, look, I mean, I, nobody can argue with your success, right? 300 deals. It, it was insane. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, most people say to have a farm. Mo you know, you were, the stuff that you're telling the, our audience to do is – is very different from what most people say. Now, is it because, Lucy, that, um, you know, that you have just been in it for so long? Um, uh, do you think maybe, you know, you have a, a, a different take on it because of that? Or is this, is this the kind of stuff that Mike will tell you to do? You know, I think, I don't think it's being in it so long. I wish I had been in coaching 40 years ago because I'd be selling 600 houses by now because I, I did all that stuff. I, I would just think of like, what should I do to get some business? You know, I'd call neighborhoods. I, I just do randomly this and that. But I mean, what really works, I'm doing now what really works and it's proven. So, you know, that's what coaching has done for me is just focused on what really works, how to, how to find the money, you know, how yeah. to find the money. Right. I mean, you can do all these long-term plans and mail out 10,000 things a month. You know what? It just takes too long. You're not going to get any money from that. I mean, you know, they have, there's that saying, there's a nut for every squirrel. Yeah. Well, once in a while, you'll get a, you'll get a nut. Right. Uh, you know, like once or twice a year. But for the money you spend, you gave it all away before you ever got the nut. And then, so you're back to even. So where are you then? I love it, man. I love, I love your attitude. Um, so when, you know, somebody's going to call, they're going to say, hey, I, I love Lucy's message. I'm going to call the Chamber of Commerce. What, what, can, give us a script or tell, like, what, what do I say? If I call the chamber. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, this is Lucy at the Lucy Ham Group and Ham Commercial. Um, I'm part of the Flushing Chamber of Commerce. And I see that you are also. And so I was just uh, calling some of the people in the chamber today, and I'm just wondering, um, how can I help you build your business? Boom. That's it. How can well, I help you? Well, I'm asking you? you a question. Oh. How can I help you build your business? Uh, <laughs> um. Um, well, for me, uh, Lucy, I, need, uh, I'm, I always need new and great guests. For the show new and great what guests people to be on my show 
Oh, yes. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, you know, um, I'll, I'll think about that. So what is what is your specialty on your radio show? You know, I have a radio show, and, you know, our specialty is just, you know, we have really, really talented people come on, and uh, mm-hmm. we try to uncover the nuggets of w- what made them successful and how they perpetuate that success. Awesome. Well, that is great. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. I will think about that and see if I can find you some more people. And by the way, you know, have you heard of the Lucy Ham Group and Ham Commercial? I've heard of Lucy Ham, but not the Ham Commercial. Okay, well, great. So we're a real estate company selling residential and commercial real estate. And um, I just want to ask, you know, who do you know, you know, maybe in your family that needs some help in commercial or residential real estate? Um, You know, I'll have to think about that, Lucy, and get back to you. Yeah. I mean, anybody in your neighborhood that maybe I could help? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I think maybe the guy across the street was, he was talking about, you know, moving and, and getting a bigger house. Awesome. But you know what, that's, that's the conversation basically. Got it. And then at the end, you know what, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the call and looking forward to seeing you around town. I love it. That is, that's, that is so great. I'm sure people are going to rewind that and, and uh, you can use that kind of script anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you could. So what I is, mean, look at maybe all your church friends. Right, <laughs> right. So what is this What is this ham commercial? Uh, it's a commercial real estate company we just opened last year. Oh, got it. Last year. It's been about a year, year and a half. We opened a commercial company also. Got it. I thought it was actually like a commercial because I heard when I was on hold uh, getting to you, um, there was a, it seemed like there was like a radio in the background with you talking. Somebody t- it was like a interesting on hold music. Oh, a testimonial. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, Lucy, that is so, – so real quick, so, so you know, in the olden days, you got your name out there, um, you know, you uh, uh, bus stop benches and, uh, uh, you know, uh, grocery store shopping carts. What do you – do you do any of that today? Do you mess with that kind of offline stuff or do you play with Zillow? Okay. No, we don't do any print media. Okay. And, and, and do you, what about social media? Um, well, you know, I mean, our, obviously our listings are all on realtor.com, lucyham.com, the board of realtors, Trulia, Zillow. I mean, it's, it's all online at all of those places. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically, you know, where, where we work off from at this time. And, you know, our phone calls, our phone calls, even of all the business we get, you know, a good 50, 60% is from the phone calls we make, you know, whether it's sellers or buyers, we, we get it from our phone calls, and I, I have someone here, ten to do that helps me make all the calls to our six thousand people every three months. We call our past clients and sphere every three months, and um, you know that's asking them who they know, who wants to buy or sell a home, and I mean all our staff ask for business all the time, you know. So it's it's really the phone calls and asking uh, people how can we help them or their families or their neighbors, you know, that gets us our business for gotcha. them majority of it mm-hmm. okay we're gonna start wrapping up here um, okay. I'm gonna ask you a question I, uh, that I don't ask everybody um, and it's just uh, I people like you that are really interesting this is this is the question right and it's and it's kind of a crazy question but it's what is something I didn't ask you but I should have asked you oh well you know I would say I would say you know if you're gonna be in real estate or in a business self-employed you know, put your family first and put them in your schedule first. Um, that will restore and keep you revived and keep you a happy, balanced person. Because if you don't have your family and your personal life and your relationship with God in order, all the rest of it's not going to work anyway. Right. So that comes first and then, you know, go to work and make it happen. That is it. Work. All right. Uh, here's the last question. It's a, uh, about a book, right? I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. My favorite. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Lucy, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, 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 you know, this, it's meant a lot to me. I've learned something, and I'm sure everybody in our audience has taken two pages of notes. So I appreciate you, you coming on the show. Awesome. Well, it's been my pleasure. It's great to talk with you. And let us know, let us know real quick, you know, everybody, you know, I thank Lucy. If you have enjoyed Lucy's uh, message and time here, reach out to Lucy and uh, let her, you know, tell her thank you. Um, where can people reach you, Lucy? Um, it's uh, Lucy at LucyHam.com, L-U-C-Y-H-A-M.com. Awesome. All right. Everybody, go say thanks. Thanks again, Lucy. I appreciate it. 